power of your love. Yes, good morning, good morning, good morning. Grace and peace unto you. Grace and peace unto you. Oh my God, grace and peace, grace and peace. Amen. We won't waste not a single moment. I want to say good morning. Top of the morning. Grand rising to amazing people today. This is Evangelist Jackie, and I'm so glad to dive in with you this morning. Thank you for deciding to dive in with me. Amen. I believe that I have an exciting um, jumpstart word for you this morning, something to just help you to kind of spring forward in your day. Amen. Thank you so much for the love. I tell you, I praise God for the love. I just want to take a moment to say thank you, Jesus, for the love, because I tell you what, it's lifting my soul right now, and I bless God for it. Thank you so very much. Amen. My message for you this morning is um, kick him and make him move. My God, kick him and make him move. On Dive In, we firmly believe in faith, grace, and the power of possibilities. Amen. And so my message, kick him and make him move. Where does that come from? Where in the world do I come up with these things, right? The Holy Spirit just drops them on me and I obey and tell you what he tells me to say. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I went on a horseback ride. Some of you might have saw the photos. I don't know. But at any rate, it was a very exciting time, a very joyful time, a very interesting and a learning opportunity as I took my um, took my riding lesson and then went on the trail ride through the wooded area and all around the property and the equestrian farm and all of that. It was just absolutely amazing, okay? Well, I got to one point on the horse ride where my horse, whose name was actually Billy Jack, decided that he wanted to break the rules. Billy Jack decided that he didn't want to continue following the pack. My God, Billy Jack, my, my, my former race back, racer back horse decided that I think I want to go that way. In his mind, I think that he got to a crossroad. <laughs> Remember that word crossroad, because that's kind of what I want to uh, platform off of this morning. He said, Billy Jack um, got to the point where he stopped right in his tracks and he refused to go. And the, of course, the, the lead is moving on. The, the horse in front of me is moving on. And my horse, which was number three, decided I'm not going to move another step. And then we had horses behind us. So we had to move not only so that we could keep up, but so that we wouldn't hold up the riders coming behind us. So I yell out to my trainer and I say, he stopped. He won't move. I can't get him to go forward. And the, the uh, instructor looked back to see what I was talking about. And he knew Billy Jack, okay? He said, you know, Billy Jack is kind of stubborn sometimes. He said, kick him and he'll move. I said, kick him. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to kick him. And then he saw that I didn't move. So he yelled it out again. Kick him. I said, kick him and he'll move. And I said, but I don't want to kick him. You know, I'm all about the animal love. I didn't want to kick the horse. But the trainer knew something that I didn't know. The trainer knew that the horse was accustomed to the kicking in his side. The, the trainer knew that the horse wouldn't take offense when I kicked him, but the horse would look at it as a sure sign that it needs to get back in line and move. 
So in the name of Jesus this morning, I got up here to tell somebody right now to look at your situation, look at your circumstance. I want you to look at the stubborn thing that's in your life. I want you to, re- look, to look at the rebellious spirit that's in your life. I want you to look at that old flesh that doesn't want to get in line and stay in line and keep up with the group like it needs to be. I want you to look at your flesh that may be holding up somebody else's process coming behind you and I want you to kick it. I want you to kick it right now so that it will move. I mentioned that it seemed as though Billy Jack got to a crossroad in his mind. What is a crossroad? A crossroad is when we get to a certain point in our journey and we can go no further or we make the decision to go no further. When we, when, 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 when we get to a crossroad in life, we have got to make a decision. But the thing about it is, Sometimes making a decision is not that easy. Sometimes it's hard as hell actually to figure out exactly what we need to do. Sometimes we can we can get to that crossroad and we can feel like we're stuck. We can feel like we're suddenly in quicksand. When we get to certain crossroads in life, we can uh, uh, be trapped in a moment of indecision. What do I do? What do I do? Which way do I go? Which way do I turn? Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I back this horse up? Do I leap over the barricade? Do I run through a troop? What in the world am I supposed to do here? When we get to a crossroad, my God, we've got to stop. We've got to survey the scene. We've got to think about what's up ahead. We've got to consider what we left behind, what we know is back there. We've got to consider what's going to happen if we go to the left or if we go to the right. And even more so, we've got to weigh the options, weigh the outcomes if we decide my God, to not decide. How that old shot. How many of you know that when you get to a crossroad in life and you refuse like stubborn Billy Jack did to make a decision, you are still making a decision. (laughs) You can make a silent decision because when you don't say yes, my God, it's like you're saying no. When you don't say no, it's like You're saying yes. When you refuse to make a decision, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, life will sometimes come in and make the decision for you. My God. And when we're dealing with spiritual things, when we are being prompted, when when we're being kicked by the Holy Ghost to make a decision, and we don't make a decision, we cannot make a decision, we refuse to make a decision, we find it just too daggone hard to make a sound decision, God, God will make the decision for you. He'll make the decision for you because a decision has to be made. My God, when we get to the crossroad, we've got to figure out a way to to kick this situation and get it back in motion. One of the things that I like to say that the Holy Ghost gave me over a decade ago is that movement inspires movement. Somebody write that for me. Movement inspires movement movement. My God, a lot of times we say we're waiting on God and we know that they say we are not waiting on God. God is waiting on us. When Billy Jack, my horse decided I'm not going to go another step further. I don't know if he was tired. I don't know if he felt a little lazy. I don't know if he saw something that I didn't see. My God, I don't know what the deal was, but I had to put some movement in it, follow the voice, the instruction of my trainer. I had to kick him in order to get him to move. And when I kicked him, even though I didn't want to, because I'm like, I don't want to hurt the horse uh, kicking. Why can't I just get him to move some other way? But he was used to kicking. He was used to the movement of the kicking. And when he felt 
that particular and specific movement, it immediately, without further reservation, prompted him to immediately also move and to move forward. He moved in the right direction. He didn't need any extra instruction. He didn't need any other kicking. I kicked him, I think, twice. And click, 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 he immediately took off, you know? When we get to a crossroad, we've got to pull on something called wisdom. And you know, as I heard the Holy Spirit talking to me about this, and he began to speak wisdom, he told me to remind somebody about the serenity prayer. So I want to do that if you will allow me to. It says, God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. If you will let me, I want to break this thing down because it, it suggests to me that somebody's at a crossroad today. Somebody needs to make some pivotal decisions today about the course that your life is taking, about the path that you find yourself on, about the horse that you may be riding the back of, and it has decided that it doesn't want to go another step further. My God, grant, God grant me. When, when we say grant me, grant means give me. Grant means gift to me. Even when we think about financials, oh goodness, we, we get grant money. And it means that we have been awarded some financial means that we do not have to pay back. And also when it says, God grant me, it suggests to me that someone is at a crossroad and they cannot do for themselves what they know that needs to be done. So they're asking for mercy. They're asking for grace. Uh, and as a matter of fact, this serenity prayer that was created so many years ago has been adopted all across the world as a backdrop for Alcoholics Anonymous programs. You know, when people are in uh, substance abuse recovery programs and they need help, they have come to a crossroad. They have hit rock bottom and the only place they see that they can go is up. But they need some help to get back up again. So the prayer says, grant me the serenity. What is serenity, Jackie? Serenity is a peace of mind. Serenity Serenity, my God, is a common state instead of a troubled state. When we ask for serenity, we're asking for those quiet waters, those peaceful waters that we talked about and mentioned in 23rd Psalm on Tuesday morning. It says, grant me the serenity to accept the things. My God, sometimes it's not easy to accept what's looking us in the face. It's not easy to accept the handwriting that is on the wall like it was in Daniel, I believe chapter number 10. Now, sometimes it's not easy to accept my God, the truth that is staring, the truth that is staring us in the face. It's not easy to accept that we're at a crossroad and we have got to make a decision. It might hurt. It might be hard. It might be disappointing. It might be scary. It might even be terrifying. But when, when, when we get to a crossroad, when the horse stops moving, when the horse decides that it don't want to go forward, it wants to hold up the progress of the rider. Something has got to be done, my God. And according to the instruction and the voice of the trainer, oh God, according to the instruction and the voice of the Holy Spirit who gives us wisdom, we might just have to lift up our heels and kick it in the side, my God, uh, to get that movement going again. Now, Lord have mercy. When we accept something, it means that we've come to the street of realization. We're going to be real with ourselves. We're going to tell ourselves the truth. One of the lines from Shakespeare says, to thine own self, 
be true. Halaboshanda. We have got to tell ourselves the truth about this crossroad that we might be in. When we accept something, it means that uh, we look at it as being a uh, fake and not phony. We look at it as being credence, my God, to the reality. And so, and so we're going to ask, my God, God to grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. Let's look at the word change. When we talk about change, the first thing I want to say is that sometimes we struggle mighty hard with change. We struggle so greatly sometimes with change. Sometimes we might be natural creatures of habit. I like it this way. This is what I'm used to. This is what I'm accustomed to. This is my territory. This is the way, oh God, that I've been doing it all my life and I want to continue to do it that way. My Lord, sometimes change can get us outside of our comfort zone. Thank you so much for the love this morning. Change can make us somewhat afraid. It can make us uncomfortable. It can throw us off of, you know, the beaten path that we're used to traveling. But how many of you know that change ain't change until you change, my God? Ah, Lord have mercy. In the in the movie, uh, 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 what was that movie? Um, New Jack City, I don't know why this stuff comes up to me like this, but I go with it, I flow with it, okay? Dive with me if you please. In the movie New Jack City, you remember that scene uh, when Nino Brown with his terrible self, he told them to get it together before I make change. My God, that means that he was about to kick somebody. He was about to cut and kill off somebody. My God, because they didn't want to get with the program. How many of you know that when the Holy Ghost gives us a program, quote unquote, and he has given us a program, the program is in his word of God. And when we decide that we don't want to ask for wisdom, we don't want to ask for divine instructions. When we decide that we don't want to know, we don't want to grow. When we decide, my God, Lord Jesus, that we prefer to uh, go and go with our own mind instead of leaning, my God, you know, well, let me get this right. The Bible tells us to lean not to our own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all our ways. And he shall direct our paths when we decide that we don't want to do that, then we find ourselves, like it or not, at a crossroad. We find ourselves at the stop on the train, my God, where the arms are pulled down. You want to go through, but you can't go through because the arms are being blocked. Guess what? They're being blocked in order sometimes to protect you, my God, from an impending train wreck. How many of you know that sometimes there are horror stories where people decide that they want to slip in between the block arms anyway, anyhow, do it their way and end up in a horrific train wreck. And sometimes it even ends up being a fatality. My God. Well, I want to let somebody know today, listen, we are not entertaining fatalities today. Everything that's on this line today is going to live and it's going to flourish. It's going to grow. It's going to soar. It's going to change. It's going to get better and not bitter. Everything on this line today is pulling on wisdom. When you get an opportunity, I want you to look at um, Proverbs chapter number four. Amen. It talks about getting the importance of getting wisdom at any cost. It says here in verse number five, that number of grace, get wisdom, get understanding. If your horse won't move, then, and you can't figure out how to make that bad boy move when it refuses to go forward, it refuses to back up. It refuses to turn around. You have no choice. You have got to lift up your leg, lift up your heel, and you have got to kick it. 
Oh God, you got to kick it in order to make it move. You got to kick it in order to remind it who is boss. <laughs> you got to kick it to make the horse remember who is the horse and who is the rider. The rider is the one that's in control. And if the rider is going to be in control, the rider has got to get some wisdom. That's why I had to get a horse riding lesson before I could get on the horse and try to ride it. Sometimes we try to jump on a thing and try to ride it without getting the proper lesson. My God. And we find that at some juncture on the journey, the horse decides that it don't want you to ride. The horse decides, you know what? I don't want to go any further on this trail. I'm going to hang out right here. My God. And I I, I, I can't forget the, the trainer when he saw the first time he told me to kick it and I was too slow to move he got more emphatic and his face screwed up and he lifted up his reins he lifted up his foot and he demonstrated for me and he said I said kick it and so guess what I kicked it hiya those shit can't I buy I want you in the spirit realm I want you to lift up your foot Wherever you are right now, I want you to get that thing in the forefront of your mind that has refused to move. I want you to get that thing in your mind that seems to be stuck. I want you to get that thing in your mind that seems to be immobile when it's supposed to be mobile. I want you to get that thing in your mind right now that seems like the battery has gone dead in it and it doesn't want to go any further. I want you to get that thing in your mind that you you know you have spiritually plugged into the socket of the Holy Ghost and yet it still acts like it doesn't want to have power when you know that it's supposed to have power. I want you by the Spirit of the Lord. I want you to prophetically kick it and make it move. Kick it and remind it that you were designed to go and I command you to move forward. That's what I want to say. When you find yourself at the crossroad, like I know that somebody up here today finds themselves at some kind of crossroad. The serenity prayer says, God grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Check this out. It prays, give me courage to change the things I can. Now, courage, I looked it up in the dictionary, my God, and it said that courage is mental or moral strength or venture. It is to persevere. When you have courage, it means that, oh God, you might feel the fear, but you're going to move anyway. You might feel the fear, but you're going to kick that horse anyway, because it's supposed to take you where you are designed to go. My God, when we have courage, we leap over the fear. We leap over the difficult thing. Oh God, when we have courage, it says, you know, that we are, we are determined. We got to go. We got to move. Anybody up here feel today, you feel something leaping in your spirit right now, kind of like a gallop on a horse. Anybody feel your baby leaping right now? You feel your baby coming back to life right now because you have been obeying the word of the prophet this morning. You have been obeying the word of the evangelist this morning and you have in the, in the spirit realm, you are taking authority. In the spirit realm, you are pulling up the horse's reins as you kick it in its side. In the spirit realm, you are clicking your teeth as you were instructed with the words that you utter out of your mouth and you say, I have courage to change the things I can. We are not going Hayabashanda. Let me tell you what we're not going to do. Uh, we're not going to be afraid to change. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Proverbs 4 says, get wisdom at all costs. And when you get wisdom, get understanding and do not forget the words that I have told you and do not turn away to, from them. When you come to a crossroad, three things must be done. You have to choose. You have to choose which, which door you're going to go through. Whether you're going through the serenity door to accept, 
the courage door to change a thing or whether you are going through the wisdom door to know the difference about what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it. Do you kick the horse just slightly, just a little bit, or do you kick the horse with all of your might? Guess what? It depends on the stubbornness of the horse. Ha <laughs> ha! It depends on the depth of the stuckness of the situation. It depends, my God, on the willingness, haya, lo shekata, to bow and to bend a wheel. In the name of Jesus, Alcoholics Anonymous uses the serenity prayer globally. But guess what? When an addict goes into a recovery program, they can quote the serenity prayer all day, every day. But until they decide, Ha, ta, ta, ta. Until they decide that they're at the crossroad of decision, nothing will change, my God. Until they decide, excuse me, Lord Jesus, until they decide, my God, that it's time for them to move forward and not stay stuck another day in their lives. They can be in the recovery program for a whole year. It won't do any good. On today, I want to tell somebody today, decide, my God, grant. God wants to grant you the serenity to accept the things that you cannot change. Courage to change the things that you can. And when I say change, let me just make this clear. When we change something, it means that it goes from one state to another state. And I decree and I declare that it goes, my God, to a better state. It goes to a higher state. It goes to a more fortified state. It goes to an increased state and in a good God a mighty type of way, not a hellacious type of way. In the name of Jesus, it means that a replacement has taken place. My God, when I say that replacement has taken place, I immediately see a divine exchange. Hiya. Oh God, he said he'll give us his strength for our weakness. My God, yes, he will. He will give us the divine instead of the fleshly. When you get to a crossroad, mm, when you get to the place where something has got to be done because I can't stay stuck in the woods on a horse that don't want to move. My God, he's got to keep up. He's got to get out of these people's way that is behind me and ready to move forward so they can continue on their journey as well. Somebody needs to catch that in the prophetic. You need to get moving because people are waiting on you. You need to rise up and get busy doing the God thing, not the good things that you are able to do, but the God thing that is absolutely and most necessary because people are waiting on you. When I say movement inspires movement, some other people cannot move until you move your horse out the way. Some other people cannot move until you get your horse on the right track. Some other people cannot move forward until you decide that I ain't staying at this crossroad. Horse, I'm going to kick you until you, you're going to do something. I'm going to kick you and kick you and I'm going to keep kicking you until you get tired of me kicking you and you're going to get it together. You are, you are going to move forward in the name of Jesus. As we get ready to wrap up here. Wisdom. Let's wrap up with wisdom. Don't forget to go to Proverbs chapter number four and, and dive into this because there are so many rich nuggets about the importance of getting wisdom at all costs. And if you find yourself at a crossroad, if you find yourself quote unquote stuck in the woods on a horse that's stubborn and rebellious and refuse to move and keep up with the group, then you have to make a decision. And I want you to make a sound decision. So you've got to get wisdom. Don't forget to go to, uh, to Proverbs chapter number four. Let's end with what wisdom is. Wisdom is the quality of having experience. When I first went to the horse trail, I didn't have the experience of going to the horse trail. I had a lot of moving knowledge. I had a lot of book reading knowledge about equestrian farms and such, but I had never done it myself. 
in that manner. So I had to get wisdom. I had to pay attention to the instructor. Are you paying attention to your instructor today? When the Holy Ghost prompts you, when the Holy Ghost pricks you, when the Holy Ghost pushes you in your back, when the Holy Ghost sends a bird by with a message in his beak for you, when the Holy Ghost speaks up to you, whispers to you, when the Holy Ghost, oh God, reminds you of a certain thing, are you paying attention? Are you listening? Are you taking his advice? Are you following his instructions to the letter? Are you doing what you're supposed to do so that you can move yourself forward? Or are you being rebellious? Are you being stubborn? Are you being fearful to move forward? Because you, you don't feel totally in control. When I was on the horse, a part of my nervousness was that I like to be in control of Jackie's movements. And I didn't know at any given moment what Billy Jack might decide to do. But I told Billy Jack, I told whole Shekha, the whole while I was on his back, I was speaking to Billy Jack and I was saying, look at here, Billy Jack, you're going to obey me today. You're going to do what you were designed to do. The instructor said for you to take it easy and I decree and declare that you're going to be easy with Jackie today. We're not falling off no horse today. I want to say to somebody right there, because I heard it just like that, kick it, kick it, kick it. Don't be afraid of falling off your horse. The horse knows that you're up there. The horse knows that it's supposed to hold you up. The horse knows that it's supposed to move you forward. And if the horse should forget momentarily, whatever, Pastor Tammy Harris, if the horse know, if the horse should forget at any given moment, hallelujah, that it's supposed to uh, move forward, it's supposed to be easy, or whatever the case may be, the instructor already told you in advance exactly what to do to make the horse get back in line. So when, when, when you find yourself at the crossroad of indecision, Proverbs chapter number four will help you make a sound decision. You got to choose what you're going to do. Serenity to accept the things you cannot change. Courage to change the things that you can change. And the wisdom to know the difference. Choose, hold on, and don't let go. When you're at the crossroad of decision, when you're sitting up high on that horse's back, my God, trusting that everything's going to be all right. Y'all saw my pictures. I was doing like this sometimes. And I was praying the whole while. I was chuckling to myself, but I was absolutely determined. Ain't no way I'm falling off this horse today. Ain't no way I'm going to end up on the splattered on the ground today. I had Billy Jack tight. Oh God, when I needed to. And we came on through together. We've got to choose when we find ourselves at a crossroad. We've got to hold on with all of our might. Let your tell. And the Holy Spirit also is saying for me to say somebody, yes, we've got to choose when we're at a crossroad. Yes, we've got to hold on tight when we need to. But also, wisdom says you also got to know when to loose it and let it go. Ha. Oh, shit. Ba, 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 ba. My instructor, my, my horse riding instructor would remind me periodically throughout my ride, my ride. You don't have to hold the reins tight. Mm, get that. Ba, 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 ba. Y'all catching this? You're diving with me? He would tell me you don't have to hold the reins tight. Just relax your shoulders. Just relax your arms. Just let it rest there. I'm saying to somebody right now, you got to know, my God, you got to properly discern. That's why you need wisdom. You got to properly discern when to hold it tight. And you've also got to properly discern when to loosen and let it go. When to relax your grip and just let it rest. If you hold tight when you need to relax, relax and let it go, you're going to mess up. If you relax and let it go, when you need to be holding on tight, you're going to mess up. When you find yourself at a crossroad, you need the spirit of wisdom to help you know what to do so you don't fall off your horse, so 
that you don't get be stuck out there in the woods uh, so you don't hold up anybody else's process who's in line behind you so you don't get left behind by the ones in front of you and find yourself out there deeper in the woods stuck and don't know which way to go uh, you got to control your horse uh, and the Holy Spirit has told me to tell you today uh, when the horse gets rebellious and when the horse gets stubborn uh, when your situation gets rebellious when your situation gets stubborn when the movement stops uh, when the movement is supposed to continue that ebb and flow you don't have no choice in the matter you got to remember your lesson in the beginning of the ride and you got to pick up your heel you got to pick up your leg and like it or not feel good about it or not you got to kick it say you got to kick it and don't worry about hurting it it understands that the kick it means get to moving baby shanda when the horses were trained they were trained to respond positively to the kicking in its side and if you refuse to kick it I don't want to hurt it oh god I don't want to do animal cruelty oh my god I don't I told my instructor when he first said I said I don't I don't want to kick it kick it <laughs> he screwed his face up he raised his voice up his shoulder squared up. He, he motioned with his body because he meant those two words. Kick it. You got to kick it. You're going to have to kick it. That's the only way it's going to move, baby. So ask God today to grant you the serenity to accept the things you can you cannot change. Courage to change whatever you can and need to change. And the wisdom to know the difference. When you get to the crossroad of indecision, to thine own self be true. Uh, hey God, when you get to the crossroad of indecision, do not be afraid. Do not fear. Do not stay stuck. Do not stay lost in the woods. Do not just sit there on a horse looking around crazy and refuse to do anything. Because remember, I told you earlier that when you do not make a decision, you make a decision. When you refuse to make a decision, baby, you make a decision. My God. And if the Lord is prompting you and pricking you to make a sound, concerted, conscious discerted a decision according to his word of God and you refuse to make a decision Father God will make the decision for you and I don't know if anybody has ever experienced God making the decision for you God taking the horse's reins out of your hands because you ain't handling it right. God shutting the door because you refuse to shut the door. I don't know if anybody has ever experienced my God. God shifting you to the left because you were supposed to duck when you got to the tree branch. Ha, like I did on the horse ride. You got to duck under that tree branch and you got to stay on that horse at the same time. But if you refuse to move... And you forget that movement inspires movement. The horse knows that the branch is there. Because the horse is always going that route. You got to know that the branch is there. You got to open up your eyes and see that the branch is there. You got to be uh, confident enough that you can duck and dodge when you need to. Going through those woods. And you can still stay up on that horse and not fall off. In the name of Jesus. When you get to the crossroad of indecision to thine own self be true honey to thine own self be true be realistic tell yourself what what really is and allow yourself to embrace what really ain't know what you working with my god rebellion hey Bashanda, you got to kick it stubbornness you got to kick it. Refusal to change when change is imminent and needed. You got to 
kick it. My God, this nasty flesh getting all unruly, getting all out of control, being non-compliant, being stuck on craziness. My God, you've got to lift up your heel. You've got to lift up your foot. Erabashanda, you got to pull the reins back so it pulls the horse's mouth back and signals to him, my God, I'm giving you a command and you must obey. Erabashanda, you got to do that. And guess what? God has equipped us. He's given, the instructor has given us an instruction manual. And if you open it up to Proverbs chapter number four, it will tell you how to get wisdom at any cost. Ha! Let it almost shine down. As I get ready to close off of here, it says get wisdom at any cost. I'm going to leave you with this nugget. Something for you to pray and ponder on. It's going to cost you something. Getting wisdom, it's, gonna, it, it's, it's not free. There's a cost with it. There's a price price tag on it. A lot of times it's a hefty price tag. A lot of times it's the last thing that we want to pay, but edible Shanda, if it is required, we don't have no choice in the matter, but to tell God, yes, Haya, Lenderable Shanda, kick it and make it move. I'm Evangelist Jackie. Thank you so much for diving in with me. I need for you to share this with me, with someone, please. If it blessed you even a little bit, it'll bless somebody else. Please share this with somebody else right now. Help me spread, dive in. Help me get God's word out to God's people so God's people can live their absolute best life. Hallelujah. And set your notification. Hallelujah. Lando Bosha, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 a.m. If you possibly, possibly, possibly can, and this is a broadcast that believes in faith, grace, and possibilities, I want you to meet me. Meet me here. In fact, why don't you just beat me here? Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Pastor Tammy. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Dr. Gothard. Thank you, everybody, for, for chiming in. Thank you so much. Click, tag, and share for me. Have an amazing rest of the week and a powerful weekend. I'll see you back on Tuesday morning. Kick it. Kick your horse. Don't be afraid. You're not going to hurt it. If you don't kick it, it might hurt you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have an amazing day.